Hey guys, so we're moving on to question two now. Um, this is a trick question. It's always important with these questions to remember your special angles and also to always have your formula sheet on hand because that will help you here. Okay, so it says, if cos 25 equals m, then without the use of a calculator, that's important, right? So when you see without the use of a calculator, you should be thinking, okay, special angles, okay? Because remember, they um, allow you or they accept that you know the the different dimensions of a special angle triangle, right? And our special angles are 30, um, 45, 60, and 90, okay? So if we leverage in questions that have um, any trig function of those various angles, then we can put in our calculator and we can, um, it com comes across as if we haven't used, our, haven't used our calculator, but you should actually know those angles, okay? So then it says, determine the values of the following in terms of M. Okay, so we have sine 25. Now, you should be thinking of this formula. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, right? So if I make this cos squared 25 plus sine squared 25 degrees equals 1, okay? And I know that cos 25 equals m, so that becomes m squared plus sine squared 25 equals 1, then if I just do it in terms of sine squared 25, just keep solving it algebraically, and then you see you get an answer in terms of M, right? So the important thing here is to know which formula to leverage and then basically algebraically manipulate it in order to get it in terms of M, okay? This is um, not given on the formula sheet, but this is something you should know, right? This is something that we always sort of prove when we start introducing trig functions. So if you don't know how to do that, please go back and revise that because it's a very common identity to use. Um, it's basically like the, the Pythag derivation is a Pythag derivation okay um um and let's then be then you get your answer here okay so now let's go to the next one so this is cos 25 now I mean cos 50 right so you should be thinking well that's 25 plus 25 so I can split it right and I could probably get something in terms of m so if we go to these here right it's very important to remember all of these different um like manipulations of these trig um, identities, right? Because they're really useful when we do these questions. So let's maybe use this one here, where it's cos alpha plus beta, but in this case, both alpha and beta are 25, right? So let's write it like this. So we say cos 25 plus 25, right? And that becomes cos 25 plus... Um, I mean, not plus, sorry, multiplied by cos 25, and then it's minus sine 25 times sine 25, right? So I've literally just substituted it into that, okay? So then if we now solve this, this becomes cos squared 25 minus sine squared 25. So we know that cos squared 25 is just going to be m squared, and we really worked out what 20 um, sine 25 is. So it would just be 1 minus m squared, square root, or squared, which becomes m squared minus 1 plus m squared, right? And that becomes 2m squared minus 1. Okay, so the trick here, again, is to identify what are, is the best identity to leverage in these questions, okay? So I know that for me, like, it might seem easy um, for me because I'm just identifying it for you, but always go back to what you've been given. Always try to find a 25, right? And, and when you can find that 25, then you know that you can then bring it back to the M, right? Okay, so let's now practice another one of these. It says cos 55. Now... You could be thinking, oh, okay, that's a little bit tricky, but it's actually not too bad. We're just going to do exactly what we did over here, right? Except now this time it's going to be cos 25 plus 30, right? Not 25 this time. So you might be like, oh, okay, that doesn't actually really help us, but let's just put it in and see what we can do, right? So I have sine 25 and then I have sine 30. Now, remember at the beginning of this question, I said, 
the examiners assume that you know the special angle triangles for the angle for a triangle with theta equaling 30, 45, 60, and 90. So in this instance, what's fine about this, right, or what's acceptable or a different pathway we can use is that, well, we know what cos 25 is, right? So we just put an M there. And we should know what cos 30 is from our special angle triangle, right? If you don't know your special angle triangles, please go and revise them. But cos 30, right, equals square root of 3 over 2, right? So you should know these, right? There's like these, you can look up on the internet, there's these little um, special angle triangle tables, which will help you revise this, right? Then again, we know what sine 25 is because we already calculated it in our previous question. So it's square root of 1 minus m squared, right? And again, sine 30 is a special angle, so it is 1 over 2, right? You should know this again off by heart. So let's just clean it up a little bit. So it's going to be square root of 3m over 2 minus square root of 1 minus m squared all over 2. Okay. And that's our final answer. So again, go and practice questions like this where you're manipulating these different identities, right? To get to an answer and to basically show that you are comfortable manipulating um, trigonometry and you understand the different relationships and the different um, identities that you can leverage in these questions. Okay, let's continue. So this is quite a classic question, the one that we're about to do. It says simplify the following expression into a single term. So they often give these like quite convoluted things and you're like, oh goodness gracious, what must I do? But it's actually okay. Let's see what we can do. So we see here that we have sine 21 cos w, cos 21 sine w. So you should be thinking, okay, let me go look at these guys here and see where this fits in. We can see it's a plus, so we know it's one of the one of these guys, okay? And we can see that it is it goes alpha, beta, alpha, beta, right? So these two are matching and it's a sine, cos, sine, cos, and cos, sine. So we know that we are looking at this identity here. Okay, so that's going to become, so you probably write out what the question says first. It's not good, um, oh, I was just, just about to say cow. It's not cow, <laughs> it's cos. I was, it's always good practice to actually write out the question, right? So write it out, sine w plus 21, because um, it just helps the examiner follow your thought pattern, right? You want to always make it as easy as possible for the examiner to follow your thought pattern. Okay, so again, I said it is this identity here. So it's going to be sine 21 plus w. Ah, that's fantastic, because look, we actually have the same at the bottom. So those are inevitably going to cancel, okay? And now, remember that tan squared beta, right, is the same as, right, writing sine squared beta over cos squared beta. Again, this is not given. This is an, uh, a relationship that you should be familiar with, okay? So that cancels with that, right? And now we have 1 minus sine squared beta. And now you might be saying, oh, but Margs, we haven't got to our single term. But remember that cos squared beta plus sine squared beta, oh, sorry, equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared beta actually equals cos squared beta. Do you see that? Right, so a lot of what they were asking you to hear to do here was to leverage both the formula sheet and also your understanding of basic trig relationships. So the answer here is cos squared b. Okay. That's a very interesting, very good question to practice because it actually gives you um, an insight into whether you are understanding those sort of basic relationships. Okay. So then it says here, in a triangle ABC, it is given that A a B equals A C equals five units. So what can we what can we determine or what can we understand from that? Well, it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we know and it says and B equals seventy two. So let's just draw this triangle just to help us visualize what is going on because it's quite difficult sometimes with information like that. So it says A B C. So it says that A B and A C. So these two guys are the same length and they're both five. Okay, and it says that angle B, so this oak down here, is 72. 
But because it's an isosceles triangle, right, this guy also equals 72, right? Because they've given it to us. Remember, we have equal sides. Therefore, the angles at the bottom must also be equal because of isosceles or properties of an isosceles triangle. Okay, so they're taking us back to um, almost like grade 8 um, sort of uh, triangle um, understanding, right? So it's important to always remember these basics of the relationships that sometimes come into play in more complicated questions. So it says sketch ABC, okay, so we've sketched it, and then calculate the area, okay? So now we need to think about the area. You could be saying, oh, how, how must I do that? Because I'm thinking half base times height. But remember, we can also work out the area of a triangle using this formula, okay? So now it says half A, B, sine C. So now you could be saying, oh dear, what does that mean, right? So let's first calculate this angle here, right? So if this is 72 and this is 72, then this has to be 36. Because remember, all the angles in a triangle have to equal 180. Okay, so if you add all of those up now, equals 180. So this little side is B, this little side is A, and this little side is C. Okay, so we can say the area, I just want to check where you can see what I'm writing. The area of the triangle A, B, C, right, can equal also, so sometimes people get confused because they're like, oh, it has to be A, B, and then sign C. But effectively, what it has to be is the two sides that you have and the angle, right, that is actually um, in between them, okay? So in this case, we're going to say it's actually side C times side B times sine A, right? So remember that. Remember that relationship, right? So it's the two sides that you have and the angle in between them, okay? So it's half. 5 times 5, sine 36. Okay, so if we now have that, all we have to do is to plug that into our calculator. Okay, not a problem. Let's quickly plug that in. So it's 1 over 2 times 5 times 5 times sine 36. If you are an AP Math student, remember to always put it into degrees when you are doing these types of questions because we don't work in radians in core maths. Okay, and we see that the area is 7.35 units squared. Okay, remember always to say squared when you're doing area because it indicates that you understand the properties of area because you are multiplying two dimensions together. Okay, so this is a great question because it leveraged lots of basic trick understanding, but also was a little bit tricky. Okay, hope that was helpful, guys. Cheers.